I don't think Dallas is, they're going to shoot as many threes as the Boston Celtics like to shoot. You know, this is a, the Boston Celtics are a team, they took 10 three-pointers in the first quarter in game two, and they was able to give them a lead. This is a team that lives and dies by the three-point line. For you to compete against them, you got to use the three-point line um, just as much. And I don't think Dallas is going to be one of those teams that's just going to continue to shoot threes, continue to shoot threes. They got two of the best guys in the business that are known for attacking the basket, that are known for getting point paints, trying to get as much as they can done inside of the three-point line. Obviously, both of those guys are willing three-point shooters. I don't see any concern with them really really struggling at, at the three-point line because that's not really been their identity. As you see on the clips here, Kyrie is in the lane. Uh, Luka's in the lane. This is where these guys are really, really special. I think what they do on a, on, on the three-point line, that's an added win for the for the Dallas Mavericks. So I don't I don't see this as a concern that they're struggling from the line now. They can get hot just like any other team can get hot. But I think the Boston Celtics are still going to shoot more and still going to shoot a higher percentage based on how that team is built and the way they like to play basketball. Yeah, I think, listen, when you're talking about Dallas Mavericks, their offense has been so potent all year long. It obviously starts with these two guys, what they can create. Now they've ran into this kind of mismatch nightmare where Boston Celtics have guys that can keep them in front. They can kind of stop the dribble penetration, which has been allowing all season long the op wide open swing, swing threes in this Dallas Mavericks offense. So it'll be interesting to see because this is a team that struggled. They've been inefficient in the finals so far, but they can definitely get hot. They have the talent. You see, we've been talking about Tim Hardaway Jr., all postseason, he finally goes and hits five threes in one quarter. So I'll be interested <laughs> to see how many minutes he get. Uh, he gets tonight. Jaden Hardy, his minutes has been up and down. He's a guy that can go and score. And this is a team that needs offense. They need that explosive scoring guy to come in and have a big game. We know what we're going to get from Luka. I'd love to see Kyrie Irving kind of be efficient tonight and have a big game in Boston because he struggled big time in game one and two. So this is a team where they have the capability to erupt tonight and make this game really fun and make this a series. And we talked about this in the previous series uh, in the playoffs so far. Dallas goes and wins tonight. Shit gets weird. Shit, all the pressure goes back to Boston. Now, that's not going to be easy. They're going to have to be perfect. They're going to have to damn near be, you know, 50% or better from three. They're going to have to get their spots. They're going to have to not turn over the ball. There's so many things. And they have to get off to a good start, too. You do not want to get down big on the road in this. That's when teams, you see, pack it in. And that's when, you know, Cabo starts looking a lot prettier than it does. So there's a lot of things that they have to do. But this team, the way they play offense, the way they play ISO and pick and roll and shoot the three, they can get hot and make it trouble troublesome tonight for Boston. All right, Lou. So that was the game for winner. But the game for a loser in the Boston Celtics, this was not just a loss. This was change the channel bad. Uh, bad game, a sign of something. Like I, I don't know how to read a score like that from a team that is supposed to be the champion here in the next couple of days. Yeah, for me, it looked like they, they expected Dallas to give it to them. They, they kind of got caught up in being up 3-0, thought that Dallas had, had surrendered, and they didn't. Dallas played one of their better games um, in the postseason and in this finals, and they put a lot of pressure on, on, on Boston from the beginning. Boston kind of looked disheveled. They looked like they weren't, weren't really motivated to go ahead and finish that thing, and, and by the time they wanted to make it a game, I think Dallas was already flowing and rolling, and you know that third quarter came around, and they put their foots down, put their foot on their necks, and made them guys uh, take this thing back to Boston. So I chalked this up as a bad game, a bad, uh, just a bad run down in down in down in Dallas. But I think they close it here at home tonight. And you know what's interesting? It's, it's almost like this game was so bad, it's good because they got off their feet. They didn't play a lot of minutes. I mean, this game was over in the third quarter. Um, so this wasn't the worst thing that can happen. It is interesting to think that they're probably going to be the champs tonight. And then two games ago, they got their ass beat by 40, which same thing <laughs> happened in NHL. I don't know if you guys watch hockey before the oh, lost yeah. eight to one the other day in their, in their closeout game. So it, it happens. This is a game. If you're Boston, you flush it. You kind of clean up some little things, but this, it, I don't think this is leaving a bad taste in their mouth going forward. They know that there's bigger goals. This team has to beat them four times, and that was just one ugly time. But, yeah, this that game was an ass whooping. It was it, it was over quick. Should count as two wins if you really think about it. Um, Jason Tatum. So he, this will be the storyline, right, especially depending on what he does tonight. But he's minus 33 in game four. That's, that's according to my numbers, not great. Um, and this is probably why he continues to get criticism from parts of – this business so does he need a big game tonight him individually Chandler for everyone to just shut up or would it even be enough at this point 
he needs a win tonight, and he won the finals 4-1, and he's an NBA champion. I think that's all that matters. And, again, I think he'll correct some things he did wrong and moving forward. I think the struggles he's had with his efficiency in this playoffs, I think it's going to do him wonders because even still, he hasn't changed the way he's playing. He still takes these tough shots. He still takes these contested long threes and sidestep two. So, it's not like he's really adapting or changing what he's doing. He's he's staying consistent with the work he puts in. And most of the time, his shots are falling. They're just not, for whatever reason, this series. So, no, I, I don't think – I think they're going to go on to win tonight. Jalen Brown's going to probably win, uh, you know, MVP, and there he's going to get his flowers. But, no, at the end of the day, it's going to be more about the Celtics. Did they get over the hump to win a championship? Did they, is this one of the best starting fives ever? I think an, an idiot would talk about how bad Jason Tatum was in a 4-1 ass whooping in the finals. So I don't think it matters at all. I'm sure he would like to play better more than we would like him to play better. But no, Here. I think the way you shut up critics is by winning a championship tonight. I'm just, I'm still confused about the criticism and the critics. We keep saying Luka Doncic is the best player in this series, but we are finding ways to still criticize Jason Tatum, who has a very convincing 3-1 lead. Yes, they lost by 38 points in game four, but other than that, this has been a dominant, dominant series for the Boston Celtics. And if he hasn't been the best player, which has been Jalen Brown, he's been a second best player. He's been a, he's been a best playmaker they've made. He started doing things. He's starting to unlock parts of his game that we didn't even really know he, he had. We didn't know he was that type of playmaker. We didn't know that he liked to get in there and get dirty and go and get nine or ten rebounds for you. These are things that he's brought to the table, and that's winning basketball. That's a winning attitude. I'm not as efficient as I want to be scoring a basketball, but I'm going to impact this game positively. He's done that this entire series. I, don't, I, don't, I still don't understand how we're trying to find something to criticize this guy about when he still has a very commanding 3-1 lead with his basketball team.